Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to export HDR for YouTube. Feel free to jump to the 2 minute mark if you want to see the step by step process using the video editing software DaVinci Resolve. But for now, I just want to provide a bit of context and background. By the way, my workflow is going to be limited to this cheap standard dynamic range monitor. So don't worry if you're under the impression that this process requires a high end HDR monitor, Blackmagic micro converter or anything like that. After working through the key steps of the workflow, I will be showing an interesting LUT or lookup table that I have found that allows the final product of the HDR footage to look similar on an SDR monitor. As you can probably see on an HDR compatible device such as this smartphone, my recent videos as well as this one are all visible in HDR. Just to give a quick background as to what HDR actually means, high dynamic range is the next generation of reproducing what the human eye is capable of seeing in reference to colors and contrast between the brightest and darkest, referred to as stops of light. Every stop is essentially doubling the brightness. To put it into quantitative terms, high dynamic range, as the name implies, has a higher dynamic range of 17 stops, close to the dynamic range of the human eye, which is about 21 stops. In contrast, SDR typically only has six stops. There is no question we have come a long way in camera technology over the past decade, and I'm excited to share the substantial improvements HDR has over SDR, especially with footage those taken from state-of-the-art cameras such as the Sony a7S III. Please know I will not be explaining any details pertaining to the color grading and context of the sample footage. As this title indicates, this video is only intended to configure a project to ensure the rendered video can be displayed in HDR on YouTube, and as a result allow its full potential. Looking at this timeline, we can see footage taken from the Sony a7S III using the hybrid log gamma profile in 10 bit color can be processed and exported to be viewable in HDR on YouTube. It is a relatively simple clip shot at a beach in Tofino, British Columbia, and basic corrections were done for exposure, saturation, and noise. Looking closely, we can see each of these nodes have HDR mode enabled. This setting adapts that node's control to work within an expanded HDR range. Practically speaking, this makes it easier to work with wide latitude signals using controls that operate by letting you make adjustments at different tonal ranges such as lift, gamma, gain, custom curves, and so on. Anyway, for now, I will open DaVinci Resolve Preferences and under the general category, if I am using a 10-bit color monitor, Use 10 bit precision in viewers if available should be checked. This will allow much smoother gradients in the colors while grading, though I am keeping mine unchecked to avoid artifacts since I am using a cheap 8 bit color monitor. Next, under project settings, I am going to navigate to the master settings. And under video monitoring, if I have a 10 bit color I.O. device connected, Within this section, I am going to change the data levels to full and change the video depth to 10 bit. Mine are already set this way, though it will have no effect in my case since I have no I.O. device connected. Under the color management category, I am going to change the color science to DaVinci Y RGB color managed. Next I am going to make sure that the color processing mode is set to custom. And this will allow the input, timeline and output to be set accordingly. I'm going to check the box where it says use separate color spacing gamma. The separation isn't necessary but I personally enjoy this for gamma control. Under the input color space, because I use the HLG profile on my Sony a7S III, I'm going to set the color space to Rec 2020 and my gamma to Rec 2100 HLG. If you don't know which color space your footage has, you can also select the automatic color management checkbox. Under the timeline color space, I'm going to set the color space again to Rec 2020 and this time the gamma is going to be set to ST 2084 1000 nit. The timeline working space will be set to HDR 1000. Finally, the output color space is the most important of them all for YouTube's HDR detection to work successfully and therefore I am going to set it to be the same as I did for the timeline which is Rec 2020 ST 2084 1000 nit. Input DRT 
or display rendering transform is going to be set to luminance mapping and the output DRT is set to saturation preserving and the roll off is going to start off at 100 nits and the limit is going to be set to 10,000 nits. For context, these provide a variety of different options to enable DaVinci Resolve to automatically tone map the image data of SDR and HDR clips to better match one another when they're fit into the currently selected timeline color space. HDR mastering is going to be checked and it is going to be set to 1000 nits. Finally, HDR 10 plus is going to be enabled. That is how project settings should be set for color grading in HDR in general. There are more options and some things to be aware of, but with this simple setup, footage will be able to be exported as a working HDR file for YouTube. Now if I save the settings and go back to the timeline, we can see the timeline displays a rather flat image now. This is because I am not using an HDR monitor and this is my SDR monitor's attempt at previewing the footage in this format. In other words, I am going to be color grading totally blind. That is the reason why color grading without an HDR reference monitor is almost impossible, at least to do it reasonably or professionally. However, as I alluded at the start of the video, there is a workaround which can help get a bit of control. Particular LUTs can be used, and in general, they are a kind of color filter used to alter the colors in an image. They apply predetermined sets of mathematical formulas to the video's existing colors to change those colors and achieve a desired result. Opening the project settings and under lookup tables, I am going to set the video monitor lookup table to a LUT that simulates what the HDR result looks like on an SDR monitor. There are a variety of LUTs available to give an approximation, though I find the custom LUT created by Wesley Napt to be the most accurate. I will leave in the description of this video a link where the LUT can be downloaded. That being said, I still recommend viewing a draft of the video on YouTube on a proper HDR device and learning how HDR behaves, especially when starting out. While the LUT used in the workflow does a good job of simulating how things will look once in HDR, some details such as highlight roll-off are much more defined in HDR than can be simulated. The final step will be at the delivery tab. The format is set to QuickTime, Kodak is H.265 and the export and embed options for HDR10 metadata are checked. Because my footage is shot in 10 bit color, I have set the encoding profile to main 44410. The rest of the settings can be set as pertaining to the project requirements. YouTube has listed HDR video requirements on their help page. Just looking at the details of the exported file using an app such as Media Info, we can see when I drag and drop it here, the details are shown for the color space. It is set to BT2020, which is synonymous to Rec2020, and that is the color space that YouTube requires for HDR. Again, I highly recommend uploading even draft versions of your project to get a feel as to how the completed video looks in HDR on a compatible device. One last thing I want to mention is that by default, YouTube will automatically embed their own LUT into the upload to allow viewers to see an accurate representation of the video in SDR. Often this default LUT is mediocre at best as it can yield a variety of strange color shades, especially in the green hue range. And I recommend injecting a custom LUT instead into the metadata of the completed file. Same principle as the video monitor LUT that I am currently using within DaVinci Resolve. So again, I'm going to use this custom Wesley Knapp LUT as metadata in my file and inject it into the file. So now the YouTube video, when shown on an SDR monitor, will show the same effect as what this LUT is using as my video monitor LUT right here on this timeline display. A link for this injector is available in the description of this video. However, in the meantime, here is a quick demonstration of the HDR metadata tool being used. So I'm just going to double click on it here and it is going to prompt me to drag and drop my file. So I'll drag right here where it says HDR video example. That is the one that I rendered. And I'll click enter and now it is going to ask me to set a name. So I'll just set it to test1 and have .mkv as my file extension. And it is going to ask me if I have an 
SDR conversion lot. I do, so I'm going to press yes. And now it is going to prompt me to drag and drop the custom lot that I have on my computer right here. So it is this .cube file. I'm going to drag it into the media injector, press enter, and press enter again. And now it is going to uh, process that file to allow the uh, LUT that I have custom made and it is going to be injected into the metadata of that file. And so when YouTube detects this file, it is, instead of using the default YouTube LUT that I mentioned is mediocre at best, is going to use the same LUT again as this timeline right here and that will be shown on SDR monitors for the YouTube video that is being broadcasted through the internet. Okay, so now we are done. If these steps are followed correctly, the uploaded video will look consistent in HDR and SDR. Although obviously the HDR version will look much nicer. I hope this video was helpful and if you want to know more about HDR and color grading HDR, let me know in the comment section. I want to note that other video editing software that allows for this operation includes Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. I personally prefer DaVinci Resolve because of how well it can utilize state-of-the-art computer hardware such as the NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card. Thanks again for watching and I wish you the best of luck in your projects. Goodbye now.